Hello and welcome back to the Just Because Show, where we talk and you listen. I'm Molly Doggerson, your host, and today don't we have something special for you? That's right, we're going to learn. We will have water sanitation specialist Jelani Jenkins joining us today. Give it up. Bring her in, everybody. Jelani Jenkins, water sanitation specialist. Say hello, Jelani. <laughs> hello, Jelani. <laughs> so, Jelani, why don't you tell our audience why you're here today? Well, I've been living in Mongolia for a couple of years now, and I started to run out of water. And I didn't know why, but I wanted to find out. Very interesting. So, Jelani, you said Mongolia, didn't you? Well, what exactly is that? Why don't you tell our viewers? Well, Mongolia is a country in Central Northern Asia. Its two bordering countries are China and Russia. <laughs> really? That kind of puts them in a tight spot, if you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. Yes, and Mongolia's climate is cold and dry. It has continental climate with long, cold winters and dry, short summers. Interesting. Dry, perhaps because of the Gobi Desert? Um, it's pronounced Gobi Desert. The Gobi Desert is a fast-growing place as the rangelands surrounding the desert are easily destroyed due to being fragile, causing the desert to expand. Wow. So, I was told you were here today to talk about a problem. Uh, what's happening in the land of Mongolia? Mongolia is in danger when it comes to water sanitation. You see, the water in Mongolia is really contaminated. Yes. Interesting, um, I thought Mongolia was home to many lakes and rivers. Can't they just drink that? That's disgusting. The thing is, the lakes and rivers are drying up. In fact, nearly a third of Mongolia's population doesn't have access to clean water. And in case you're stupid, that's about one million people. Thank you for that. As, as well as the water drying up, much of the rivers and lakes that are left are being contaminated with pollutants such ah. as arsenic and lead. <laughs> well, this has been interesting. But don't worry, folks, it's not over yet. We'll be right, we'll be right back after this short commercial break. Butter is nice, butter is good. I would eat butter if I could, but I can't. I live in Zim. But you can buy your margarine at Hims. Buy your margarine at Hims. The better alternative. Welcome back, folks. In case you missed our first segment, Jelani Jenkins is here, water sanitation specialist of Mongolia. Moving things along, Miss Jenkins um, has more insight regarding the water crisis in Mongolia. So, Jelani, off camera, you mentioned something about cows earlier. Uh, why didn't you tell the audience what you told me? Because quite frankly, I forgot. Well, if you remember, I didn't say anything about cows. I said cattle herding. In Mongolia, because of the contaminated water that I mentioned earlier, many of the native people who rely on their cattle for income are out of options because their cattle is dying. Oh, but I mean, it's just a bunch of cows. Who really cares? Did you not hear me? People rely on cows for income. Okay, okay, you got me there. But apart from that, uh, what else is happening? Well, one of the main reasons Mongolia's fresh water sources are lacking is because of climate change. Climate change is bad. Climate change has caused an increase in desertification and unequal water distribution. This is causing many, 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 many problems. Oh, uh, that doesn't sound so nice. Um, let's move along. Jelani, I have been told that I'm quite a worldly, insightful, intelligent person. And um, I would think that someone as worldly, insightful, and intelligent as myself 
would have heard about this Mongolian water crisis. Tell, is there a reason I haven't? Well, Molly, in fact, there is. Countries such as Mongolia and, and, and Thailand, their governments are disclosing information to the public about their health and the environment, right? Yes. Yes, yes, I'm right, okay? But the information that is shared isn't accessible to the people who live in less developed areas. They can't access computers, maybe, or if they do have computers, they can't access internet, and they can't use it to find the knowledge. It's a problem. It's a real problem. Okay. Let me guess. There's more problems. Of course, Miss Doggerson. An increase of urbanization and economic reliance on mining have also contributed to the gradual pollution of groundwater resources in Mongolia, the country's main source of water outside of mountainous regions. Also, also, also something else. The people of Mongolia, they say that, that water is better to drink in winter. You want to know why? Okay. Well, in, in summer, the water is more vulnerable because it's melted, you know? Which means that more pollutants and things can get into it. You're right. You said it. Good oh, job. Guys, I told you I'm insightful, intelligent, and worldly. Yes. And also, they say because winter is when... They go up to the mountains and they get the water and the lakes are frozen, but they pierce holes into the thingies. The thingies. The ice. The, the ice. ice. They pierce it into the ice and then they take out the water. Yes. That is all the problems, right? Well, most of the major ones. All right then, we can move on to what's being done, solutions, and the future. In fact, I think it just might be time for another short break. We'll be right back, folks, after these messages. Woo! Wait, we need to add something about cattle herding. Didn't you mention that? I swear we wrote that in. All right, Jelani Jenkins. I thought that we should move on to some solutions. Solutions that are happening in Mongolia right now. What is being done? to help this Mongolian water crisis, no matter how much the government has covered it up. Well, good sanitation and drinking water in Mongolia has improved over the past 25 years thanks to UNICEF. Oh, well that's great. Yes, but you know how I mentioned earlier nearly a third of the population doesn't have access to clean drinking water? I recall you said that's one million people. Yes, but nearly half do not have access to improved sanitation. Of the water? Yes. Really? Yes. But UNICEF has been working with partners to improve this number. Mm -hmm. And um, what exactly at the moment is UNICEF working in? UNICEF's water sanitation and hygiene programs have been helping children especially children in developing areas. Yes, I believe their program is called WASH. <laughs> kind of funny, actually, since WASH, you wash with water. They probably did that on purpose. So what has UNICEF promoted and increased in Mongolia due to their WASH program? Um, well, they've promoted good hygiene practices. Like washing your hands, for example, which I should do now because they're dirty. <laughs> and uh, moving on, increased? What have they increased? Well, they've increased the children's access to this clean drinking water. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Earlier you mentioned that mining was a really big problem for water sanitation in Mongolia. And so I would think that with the mining causing such a huge problem, there would be a solution. Tell me, tell me now, what is that solution? Is there a solution? Tell me. Well, actually, in fact, Mongolia is home to one of the world's largest copper and gold deposits. And guess what? It's in the Gobi Desert. Really? Mm -hmm. So, I must ask, you said that the mining is bad, correct? And this is a mine. Mm-hmm. Also correct. 
So would that not be bad, or is this mine different? Well, a mine called Rio Tinto is a mining corporation, and they have a 66% ownership stake, mm -hmm. whilst the Mongolia government owns 34%. Really? And why is this mine so good? Because once it's fully operational, right, it could improve Mongolia's GDP by 35%. And guess when they're going to do that? What? By 2020! That is two years from now. Wow. So this mine, it's not only helping the Mongolia's GDP. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you do not laugh when I'm talking. Really, I need to scroll this well. So this Mongolian mine is not only going to help the GDP, but it is also going to help with water sanitation. Yes, that is just wonderful. You want me to tell you how? Sure. Okay, so in the Gobi region, they have little to no surface water, right? Yes. So in order to maximize productivity in this water-stressed environment, the mine place has implemented these water reuse systems, right? Highly efficient. Yes, it is highly efficient. And they also have zero low water use equipment. Mm -hmm. And then there's also these really cool things, which are floating lagoon covers to reduce evaporative loss. So basically, this mine is, could just be the thing that solves people in the Gobi Desert's water problems. Yes, actually. And I think that most mines in the area will take after these people because they're doing such a good job when they start. Really? That is just wonderful, Jelani. <sighs> this has been a very informative day. Thank you so much, Jelani. You're welcome. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jelani Jenkins, water sanitation specialist. It has been a pleasure. Give it up for Jelani Jenkins, everybody. <laughs> Bye, Jelani. Bye! Hope to see you again! Alright folks, on next week's show, we have two segments. We're gonna have Pigs That Can Fly, A Myth or Science, and Dr. P's Pimple Bopper. I'm Molly Doggerson, your host, and this is Just Because.